Revelation chapter 18, as we move through the word of God coming rapidly to the end. In the 18th chapter, we find God's judgment upon commercialism. That which has enslaved so many people. We read in verses 4, well actually let's go to 12 to 14. The merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her. Because no man buys their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple and sink and silk and scarlet, and all the thine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble, cinnamon and odors and ointments and the frankincense, and wine, and oil, and the fine flour, the wheat, and the beasts, and the sheep, and horses, the chariots, and the slaves, and souls of men. All the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all the things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. And so the Lord spoke of those fruits that thy soul lusted after. The worldly man is controlled by his appetites. God intended that we be controlled by our minds, not by our emotions, not by our appetites. God wants us to think things through. In Isaiah chapter 1, God said, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Paul talks about presenting our bodies as living sacrifices unto God, which he says is our reasonable service. God wants us to be ruled by our minds, not by our lust. But the worldly man is controlled and is ruled by his lust. He doesn't stop to think things through. I love the title of the book that Dr. Wilder Smith wrote, He Who Thinks Must Believe. If you really stop to think it through, you've got to be a believer. But you see, men don't stop to think. They're ruled by their prejudices. They're ruled by their lust. But the Lord says the fruits that your soul lusted after. Paul tells us that the problem is the God of this world has blinded the minds of men that they cannot see. The worldly man doesn't think things through. Solomon wrote of looking out of his window at a street scene. He said, for at the window of my house I looked through my casement and I watched the simple ones and I discerned among them the youths and a young man who was void of understanding. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and of subtle of heart. And she is loud and she's stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now she is in the streets and she is waiting at the corner. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. I've paid my vows. Therefore, I came forth to meet you. I diligently sought to seek your face and I have found you. 
And I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and with carved works with fine linen of Egypt. And I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. And with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With a flattering of her lips, she forced him. He went after her as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. He did not stop to think until he discovered that he had contracted a venereal disease. He was as a bird that hastens to the bird trap and does not know that it will cost him his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children. Attend to the words of my mouth. Let not your heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she has cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been destroyed by her. Her house is the path to hell, leading to the chambers of death. If a person would only stop to think how foolish it is to enter into a sexual union with a prostitute. You don't know what diseases might be transmitted to you through that encounter. If you had stopped to think of the damage, the possible damage to your home, to your family, to yourself. You would never do it. But you see, people are not controlled by their minds. They're controlled by their lust, by the appetites of their flesh. And they do things impulsively rather than intelligently. What were the fruits that these people were lusting after that the Lord speaks about here. As we began in chapter 12, they were lusting after the merchandise of gold, silver, and precious stones. Or, they were lusting after expensive jewelry. How many people have gone into Hawk because they decided to buy some expensive jewelry? Couldn't really afford it. But yet, wanting to make a good impression, you go into debt buying expensive jewelry. Then he speaks of the fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet. The extravagant, Fancy clothes. <laughs> and how many people have a closet full of clothes that they're still paying for? And if they bought it on a credit card, will be paying probably for years in order to have that fancy, expensive dress or coat or whatever. And then he goes on and speaks of the things that were made furnishings of the house, ivory, rare woods and so forth. And how many people have been duped into buying furniture they can't afford? And then he talks about the expensive, costly perfumes the gourmet food, and the fancy sport cars. You say, wait a minute, it doesn't say anything about sport cars. No, it does say horses and chariots, and they were the sports cars of that day. <laughs> C 
commercialism. The things that people lust after. If they would use their minds, they'd realize we can't afford this. If they had stopped to work out the budget, they'd say, no, we just can't afford this. But you get carried away with your emotion. You feel, I've got to have it. And thus, you go into debt. And so many times, and of course this happens especially among young people, young married couples. They are not willing to wait. They want it all now. The fancy refrigerator, the deluxe stove, and they want it all now, the fancy home. And when you sit down with them as they come for help because of their financial problems, and you say, okay, what is your salary? Now, how much are your payments? No wonder they're in financial trouble. Their payments are double what their salary is. And so they are going into debt further and further, but it's that we've got to have it now. The things that your soul lusted after. What does the Lord say about them? They will depart from you. One day a tow truck will come up and attach itself to that fancy sports car and haul it away. <laughs> you haven't made your payments. But basically, what the Lord is talking about here is the last days when the judgments of God come upon the earth. When people all over the world are starving to death because of the great famine that will probably be caused by the radiation, the radioactive fallout that will follow the wars in which atomic weapons will be used. And the whole food chain contaminated so that we do read in the earlier part of Revelation that they'll be selling a quart of wheat for about $75. And you see, when it gets down to the bottom line, food is the most important thing for survival. You can't eat your fancy furniture. You can't eat your jewelry or your clothes. And the bottom line will be you're hungry, you're starving. And the prices of food will become prohibitive. The things that you lusted after will depart from you. They'll be of no value to you. The general desolation that is going to come upon the earth as the result of the cataclysmic upheavals of nature. These possessions of yours will offer you no comfort or no value. I think of those who were on the Titanic. And really, for the most part, they were very wealthy people taking the maiden voyage on this Beautiful, luxurious ship. And as that ship was going down in the icy waters of the North Atlantic, I'm sure their thought wasn't on the loss of the fancy jewelry that was still in their stateroom. 
but their minds were on survival. Again, that's bottom line. What are all of the things that I possess if I don't survive? They have no value to me at that point. Survival becomes the main issue. And so it will be in those days when God's judgments begin to come upon the earth. All of the things that your soul lusted after, all of the things that you went in debt for, all of the fancy things that you've surrounded yourself with will be meaningless to you. Survival will be the real issue. But the Lord said, all of these things that your soul lusted after, you shall find them no more at all. What does that mean? If you have put your life and your investments in material things. When you die, you will find them no more at all. Jesus gave an interesting parable concerning a man who had laid up his treasures on earth but was not rich toward God. He said, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth abundantly. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? Because I do not have enough room to store all of my goods. And he said, I know what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns and I'll big, build bigger barns. And there I will store all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for the future. Take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, and then whose shall those things be which you have provided? And the bottom line, Jesus said, So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Imagine all of the labor, the effort, the striving, the scrimping that you have done in order to build a fortune. It will all be gone forever in just a moment of time. Think of how many rich people have died of heart attacks from the pressure of amassing their wealth. You spend your whole time amassing a nest egg so that you might retire and enjoy your senior years and then so often die within the first year of retirement. I was back in West Virginia years ago. I was still in college and taking a trip in the summer to the eastern part of the United States just to see the U.S. And there in West Virginia, we met this man who had been working for the B&O Railroad for 40 years. He was 54 years old. He had started working when he was just 14. And I said, you mean you've been with him for 40 years? You ought to be able to retire after 40 years. And he got real upset and angry with me. He became emotional. And he began to tell me of all of the people that had been working for the b &O Railroad who in their first year of retirement died. So when I said, you ought to retire, it was like I was saying, you ought to drop dead. But how sad that is. Gone in a moment. Never to be seen again. Solomon said, There is an evil under the sun, and it is common among men. A man to whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wants for nothing, 
He could have anything he desired, and yet God has not given him the power to eat of it. But a stranger eats it. This is vanity. It's an evil disease. All of the things your soul lusted after. What is your soul lusting after today? Now the basic folly of lusting after things is that the thought is if I would just have this, I would be happy. If I could just have this, I would be satisfied. I would be content. I wouldn't want anything else. And that folly of thinking that I can find satisfaction, I can find fulfillment in material things. That is a deception. It is not true. You might find temporary excitement in that new thing that you're desiring. But it will soon fade and pass and there will be a desire for something else that will hopefully bring satisfaction and contentment. Man cannot find satisfaction in material things, but there is a void in man's life that seeks to be filled. The problem is, the void is a spiritual void and only a meaningful relationship with God can fill that void. But man conscious of that void, not really understanding why the feeling of emptiness, seeks to fill the void with other material things. Now, Madison Avenue knows this quite well. And thus, those men, geniuses in advertising, make you think that the product that they have to sell you is going to fill that void in your life. And that's really the tenor behind all of the advertisement is that this is the product that's going to do it for you. This is the product that's going to bring you what you're desiring. Success, happiness, fulfillment, a love. And the commercial interests are ready to extend you credit. Have you, like me, been receiving from banks all over the country offers for visa cards? I mean, every week we get some new offer, you know, and 5.9%, you know. Read the fine print. Transfer all of your other cards over to this one and pay only 5.9% for the first six months. And then it goes to a regular interest kind of a rate and you find that you're paying up to 18% interest on that card. But they want to have you get the card so that you'll purchase things that you can't afford. We have a Jewish friend who tries to practice the Jewish law of the Sabbath. And uh, according to the Jewish law of the Sabbath, you're not to buy things on the Sabbath. And so we were there and it was the Sabbath day and he suggested we go out for lunch. And we said, but you can't buy lunch on the Sabbath. Oh, he says, I won't pay with money. I'll use my credit card. <laughs> it's all right to use your credit card. He said, that's not money. And that is the mindset of people. 
It's so easy to push that piece of plastic across the counter because you don't have the feeling of the money going out. And they are anxious that you extend that card to its limit. In fact, even over its limit because they have little extra charges when you go over the limit of the card. They don't mind that. They give you a minimum payment each month which barely covers the interest. They want your card maxed out and they're wanting to get the interest off of that card. And so here people become slaves and that's exactly what it speaks of here, slaves of the souls of men. People become enslaved to the commercial interest. Because they are trying to fill the void that is in their life with material things. And they amass to themselves these material things. As well as the debts in, that are incurred in trying to pay for them. But here they're all going to disappear in a moment. Never again. To be possessed by you. Wiped out in just a moment's time. You will find them no more at all. And so in chapter 18, and we'll be dealing with this tonight. The whole commercial system is going to come under the judgment of God. That's what the 18th chapter is about. God hates this system that has enslaved so many people's lives and holds them enslaved. God hates that. And it's going to come into the judgment of God in chapter 18. Jesus said a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. Our lives consist in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. James said, hearken, my beloved brethren. Has not God chosen the poor of this world who are rich in faith as the heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to them that love him? I would much rather be poor in this world and rich in faith than rich in the world and poor in faith. Because the riches that we have in Christ are lasting. They are eternal. Think it through. Reason it out. It's true. You're here for such a short time. You'll be in the eternal realm forever. Is it wise to put everything in this life and nothing in the life to come? Does that make sense? I trow not. Father, we ask your help. We realize that the God of this world has deluded men, has blinded their minds to keep them from thinking rationally and has taken them captive by the world and the things in the world as they, Lord, try to fill the void in their lives with material possessions. Lord, we realize that only Jesus can satisfy and fill the void in our hearts. Lord, we realize the day is coming in which you are going to bring judgment against the materialism of the world and the things that people have lusted after. 
One day you're going to shake this world until everything that can be shaken is shaken and only that which cannot be shaken is left. Lord, we thank you for the unshakable faith and confidence that you've given us in Jesus Christ. That which will last when the world crumbles. Father, we pray that you would open the eyes of those who have been blinded by Satan's deceptive powers. May they be able to reason things through and see that it makes sense to give your life to Jesus Christ. And may they do so this day. In his name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Maybe we have been sort of describing some of you this morning. There are things that your soul has lusted after. You've been trying to amass these things. It could be that some of you are hopelessly in debt as you've tried to fill the void in your life with those material things that Madison Avenue promised would bring satisfaction. But you're aware of the emptiness and the hopelessness, really, of your current financial situation. Time for you to discover that which truly satisfies, and that is a meaningful relationship with God. That's what your spirit is longing for, thirsting after. And that thirst cannot be quenched by any material possession or emotional experience. It can only be satisfied by a meaningful relationship with God. And that can only happen as you yield your life to Jesus Christ. So the pastors are down here at the front. As soon as we're dismissed, we encourage you to come on forward. Pray with them. Let them pray for you. Open your heart. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, to bring you into a meaningful relationship with God. And you'll learn with Jesus, as Paul did, that glorious contentment No matter what condition you might be in, there's just that beautiful contentment. As he said, I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content, satisfied. Only Jesus can satisfy. I encourage you, make that decision. to give your life to Jesus.